Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Uh, as you might have noticed, if you've seen the video and the announcements on the channel, I have actually been out camping, so I just came back yesterday and I'm just catching up with what's been going on. Uh, a new update's out, apparently, so let's quickly go through, uh, go through the patch notes and see what has changed. First up, new game mode, Epicenter. If you know World of Warships PC, you are somewhat familiar with this. This is a three concentric ring mode where the inner ring gives more points, I think. And uh, yeah, so they have, what do we got? Inner ring provides six points, middle ring five points, and outer ring four points. So that means, that, that means capturing and controlling the center of this is even more important than on center cut maps, just because of the sheer of the sheer amount of points income that you have. So uh, this is this these probably are going to be very aggressive games, and the team that manages the aggression best and manages to capture and hold the center, uh, and probably well that's why it's called epicenter and probably the center the middle ring, uh, is gonna get a very very big points income. So. We'll have a closer look at that later. We get three new maps. Can't really say much about them, but um, they all seem to have uh, they all seem to have islands around them, and obviously the center being the interesting part. Uh, the arms race mode, another port over from PC, it seems to be coming to the training room for feedback. So that's uh, that's that's the thing that I think already happened with the epicenter mode. Now, uh, arms race again. If you're not familiar with it, uh, you get you, there are buffs that you can collect, which make your ships better. So this is something to try out in the training room. This one is very interesting. Visual warning indicator for incoming torpedoes. Yet another PC port over, because PC does get the visual warnings, whereas so far Blitz only gets the audio warnings. And uh, that means we're going to see yellow and probably reddish torpedoes, depending on how close they are. Uh, obviously not for friendlies, I hope, because that would be confusing, because friendly fire is not a thing in Blitz. But um, I think this is going to be yet another thing that makes it so much harder to torpedo unaware players, because... You know, we've already had the captain skill buffs, we've got more and more uh, sonars, and now we're also getting the visual indicators. So stealth destroyer, long range torping might be still getting more difficult. Although obviously the torpedoes have to be detected first for the, in, uh, for the, the indicator to come. So if you manage to drop um, out of detection and people have been ignoring the audio warning, then they're probably gonna ignore this one as well. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, some adjustments to the observer mode. Um, and we have some some more portraits and what else do we get? Bug fixes, uh, mainly around medals. So let's come to the interesting part. The ship rebalancing. What has changed? The propeller system module HP was reduced by 25%. Now, there is what you see relatively frequently is that you get your, uh, your rudder damaged. So such that your your steering locks in place and you can't um, you can't actually steer the ship until it is repaired. I have heard rumors on Discord that there is this mythical instance of somebody actually losing their propulsion. I've never seen it in the thousands of games I've played. It feels like this goes in that direction. That this is something. This is an actual module, like a propulsion module, but. Uh, I think propeller system is meant to be the propulsion system. That's at least what I assume. And that this can actually be damaged, but it doesn't happen or it almost never happens because probably the amount of damage it takes to that particular module is too high. And uh, it might be sitting in the rear somewhere. Maybe we're talking about the propeller shafts. I don't know, but um, not the engine rooms, but you know, we will we shall see if that starts popping up next up the Italian cru Italian cruisers uh, it looks like all the Italian heavies have been nerfed because their sub penetration has been decreased in favor of the armor piercing penetration being increased 
I haven't really played any higher tier Italian cruisers, but I have heard stories and I've been at the receiving end of these things and the Zap shells sure were nasty because they do have a very high damage, a very high alpha damage, and um, apparently the penetration was just too good that they could do too much damage with it. So in addition, starting tier seven, they're also losing a second on the reload and uh, that goes all the way up to tier 10. So uh, not something I'm personally going to be trying out anytime really soon because I don't have any higher tier Italian cruisers, but uh, definitely a change to, to keep an eye on. Uh, destroyers. The Fusion gets nerfed. <laughs> but fortunately, it's just the HE shell penetration decrease. So uh, Fushun, for, for those who are not aware, is, um, is a Gnevni, the very powerful tier 6 Soviet uh, destroyer. But Soviet destroyers have very short-range torpedoes and usually no smokes. Well, the Fushun fixes that by getting very good long-range torpedoes and a smoke. <laughs> Plus the Gnevni's guns. Well, not anymore. So it's a little bit less of the Gnevni guns. But usually you're, you're not firing HE on, on the Fushun for full pens anyway. If you're firing at destroyers, you'll be firing armor piercing and the HE is mainly there to set fires. So I don't, I don't see it being a huge issue with that. Uh, another one, the Pan-Asian. The Xianyang got nerfed as well. Now, the Xinyang is one very, very good destroyer that I was planning to review very soon, and now I'm glad that I didn't because now it's changed and I would have to do it again, so I don't because I haven't done it yet, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Anyway, the Xinyang gets her torpedo damage reduced, reduced by 100 points, so uh, that is noticeable probably, and she gets the reload uh, upped by over 5 seconds, and that is probably also noticeable. Uh, the same goes for the Yu Yang. She also loses 100 points and gets five per, um, gets five seconds. I don't know what happened to tier nine, but um, it might have been already might have been already fine. Uh, the Japanese gunboats get their get their guns buffed, so increased HE penetration and better fire chance. I'm not sure that something like the Kitakaze or the Harugumo really really needed a better fire chance, but this is. Maybe this is somewhat of a compensation for the HE fire damage change, because especially at higher tiers, you're not going to be doing that much anymore with fires. And uh, maybe for this particular class, this is now balanced a little bit out. I mean, if you've seen the, if you've seen the sheer amount of shells that these things produce, um, anyway. And it looks like all the, uh, all the Japanese destroyers, starting with the Kagero, up all the way up to the Shima have gotten a significant, more probably significant, somewhat significant buff to their guns as well, which um, is probably not that huge of a thing because Shimas are not known for gunning down stuff, and um, neither are Kagero's to be honest. But <laughs> I mean, you know, it's good to have. Now the last one here, the Kabarovsk, has her rudder shift time decreased. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Uh, honestly, I've always felt bad for Kaba captains because my Mino has a better maneuverability than that thing. <laughs> and the Mino is a cruiser. So that's that's good. That's very good. Uh, and in terms of cruisers, talking about which the Ibuki, which I haven't played, get her gets her uh, HE penetration increased, which is good because that's probably what you'll be firing. Gets a better surface detection and gets better, um, gets faster turning guns. So buff, uh, buff for the Ibuki. The Yoshino, have I reviewed the Yoshino? I, I can't remember. I've reviewed something, <laughs> like a Japanese super cruiser, I think. But um, anyway, uh, she gets better HE. Yeah, better HE, better range. Uh, I really can't remember if I've reviewed that thing or if I haven't. But if I have, well, she is now better than she was. The Dmitry Donskoy and the Moskva both get a radar. <laughs> Sm smoke destroyers are getting power crept to no end, really. Um, like I feel for the American destroyers. At least the, um, at least the um, the Pan Asians are usually having a very good detection range. Uh, but. <laughs> Oh dear, more radars. Uh, the French cruisers get buffed again with the HE. So I am starting to get a feel that this is somewhat of a backpedal on the whole fire damage reduction thing. So I don't know if that's what, what's behind it, but we, we are seeing 
across the board HE HE main ships having their um, their guns, their fire chances, and everything buffed. Um, I'm not sure about how I feel about that because I actually quite liked the change with the HE damage, and I think it was a good change because it made the it made the fire and flooding resistance actually a useful factor rather than an afterthought. Because honestly, before that, it absolutely did not matter if you had 10% or 25% uh, fire resistance because you got set on fire anyway, but the sheer amount of fire that the higher tier ships can put out. Whereas now you're actually actively taking less damage from it. But now this is somewhat countered again um, with the notable absence of the Soviets. So apparently things like the Shores and the Shapayev are powerful enough as they are. But the French get uh, get better H get better fire chances. The rune, okay, the rune is interesting for me. She gets uh, she gets one thousand more hit points, and she she gets a readjusted armor module to make it more effective against large caliber AP shells. Okay, um, I mean the rune hasn't been particularly vulnerable to large caliber AP. I mean she's still a cruiser, right? But she's a German cruiser, so she does she can take quite a bit of a beating. Um, but yeah, it's a welcome change. I always like it when my German ships get more <laughs> more tanky. And lastly, the Vanguard, the, in my opinion, rather underwhelming tier 8 premium, gets better HE shells. And the Iowa gets a nerf. And not, in, not an insignificant one, so that's probably a historical camel's worth of, uh, of dispersion nerf. Uh, so apparently the Iowa was precise enough, or too precise, with her main guns, which um, is surprising. I mean... I haven't played the Iowa, but certainly North Carolina never struck me as something that was too precise with her main guns. So we shall see how that turns out. Anyway, um, so that's the summary of these things. Now, I have one battle for you <laughs> uh, because I've just I just wanted to try out uh, things on the epicenter, and it just kind of really, you know, sh probably shows a bit about that map. So let's uh, get into that. So this is me in the rune, actually being top tier on the chain map. And uh, we have an enemy team comprising an Enterprise, Missouri, Alsace, uh, Ritchie, Kutuzov, Fletcher and Benson. We only get one destroyer. And it's an epicenter, like I mentioned. Now, don't get your hopes up. This is not going to be glorious, <laughs> at least not in the way that you might be expecting. But um, we, do, we do have an Enterprise of our own. And we do have an Iowa, so some AA going around. The Rune is not an AA cruiser by any sh by any stretch of imagination. So obviously, what do you want to do in these kind of maps? Well, you want to rush the center, especially if there's an island in the middle, and that falls into the destroyer. So that uh, Benson over there, that would be great if he could move forward and um, rush the center, being a destroyer. So he's moving. But uh, he seems to think that going into the capture circle is, uh, for, is, for, is for losers. And meanwhile, our carrier uh, doesn't seem to be thinking that planes are ex ex uh, extremely useful. So the enemy starts capping the outer ring and um, sending planes out in our direction with a, with a broad sweep, uh, sweeping scout. And I appear to be the only one who's interested. Now our carrier is starting to send... Um, to send things out, so um, yeah, we, we should probably capture something. That might be a great idea because I'm pretty sure the two destroyers are rushing through, but our destroyer th seems to think that he's a carrier escort. So what I'm trying to do here, and I'm still the only one in the rigging <laughs> capture circle, <laughs> what I'm trying to do here, besides getting torpedoed by the carrier, which I can't do much about, can try and dodge them. There you see the torpedo indicators. Uh, it's kind of neat, but um, well, I, I, I knew that these were coming. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is loop around and actually get angles at um, at the at the center area, but uh, it does because I had to I had to try and dodge uh, plane torps. It does take a little bit longer, and um, now our carrier is actually having a single squadron out. He doesn't he seem to think that anything else needs to be out there, and the destroyer is still carrier escorting, and I'm still the only one who's trying to capture anything in the things. <laughs> And of course, now that I'm this far forward, I'm getting all the undivided attention of the carrier. There's a Benson. Now, I would love to have angles up the Benson. The problem is I'm running, I'm running headfirst into the enemy team, and my team is so far behind 
and the carrier is still only managing to get one squadron out. So now I'm starting to come on fire from, under fire from the Kutuzov, and that, like a minute in, is my first shot. And there's the Fletcher as well. So um, Benson's going. That means I need I need to deal with Fletcher now. And the problem is if I'm giving broadside, uh, uh, there's an Alsace shooting at me and a Kutuzov. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure the Fletcher's got torps away at this point, so I'm just running. And there come the torpedo indicator, because I also have to dodge the plane torps, because there come the plane torps, which means I'm probably going to run on flooding, and I'm getting blapped in the side by the Alsace, and there are probably Fletcher torps in the way. I can hear, I can see the indicators already uh, popping up any second now, because, uh, well... Oh dear. So, at least some of my team has managed to get into the outer ring. There's the Kutuzov. And it looks like we're capturing the outer ring. Now the problem is, look at the points. Nobody has lost a ship. And while I'm getting hammered by everybody here, nobody's lost a ship. And um, the, the enemy team is 300 points ahead because they've been holding all the three rings for, for, uh, for most of the time. Now, uh, I do need to get out of here. I can't sustain this. And um, obviously, get capturing the inner rings is no question. Uh, I don't think I can accelerate quickly enough, so I'm going to take one of those torpedoes. But it doesn't matter anymore. Because uh, look at look at where the rest of my team is. The destroyer still seems to be f uh, finding absolutely no reason to go in. The Richelieu takes me out, <laughs> and the enemy is holding all three uh, all the three circles. The problem is you can't even get to the inner circles because they are now set up in defensive positions. Our um, one of our battleships is trying to furiously get into the next map. The carrier has actually found out that he has more than one uh, that he has more than one squadron. But um, everybody else is backing off because the destroyers have broken through and the Benson is still escorting the Enterprise <laughs> while well, trying to get himself torpedoed. But I think they might just run out. Yeah, they just run out of, um, of, uh, of range. So the enemy Benson is on low health, but we have lost, well, myself so far. The rest of the team has made no effort to get anywhere near the capture circle, except for these two who are actually uh, the Roma and uh, the other cruiser who's actually with... Yeah, the, the Brindisi, who's actually the other, only other um, one beside me who actually decided to go into the capture circle. So when the cruisers are taking points, oh, the Benson, bless his soul, is trying to smoke up the Enterprise. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but um, uh, yeah. Um, and we're, not, we, we're a bit more over half the battle and the enemy team's already at 600 points. This is how rapidly you get points from this. Uh, the Brindisi has um, given up on life, just as I have about two minutes earlier. Everybody else decides that they'd rather be outside the capture circles than inside. Uh, epicenter means you absolutely, positively have to capture. If your team is not aggressive, you will lose. Because getting through to the inner circles and um, actually holding them is so essential. You need to control... If you control the inner circle, you are... Uh, just the inner circle, you already have a pretty decent points income. Um, two thirds, basically, of the other two. So, it's it's essential that you hold um, at least two of the capture circles, and uh, that means it's it's resting. Look at that, 16 points <laughs> we were down to. Um, it's essential that uh, yeah that your team operates aggressively and gets into these into these rings because if the enemy team does and holds the rings, you will lose extremely rapidly. And look at that. I've done 13,000 damage. I've shot eight planes down. And I'm still coming second in the team. <laughs> that tells you a lot. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's it for me today. Uh, thanks, everybody. And I'll see you all back on Saturday. Bye-bye.